welcome back to my channel. Thank you for tuning in once again. I appreciate that. Each and every one of you that watch my videos, I appreciate that. I am actually headed to another bad bathroom job, specifically a shower that has gone south from a contractor that this woman had hired off of um, one of those referral sites. I forget what it is. Apparently, he's never built a shower before. So I run into that quite a bit where I get called out on one of these bad shower jobs and the guy has done a backsplash in the kitchen, he's done a floor for somebody or whatever and then they usually get referred by a friend or a relative and then he tries his hand at doing a shower and fails miserably because there's so much prep that's involved. Let me reiterate this, prep, prep, prep. <laughs> the prep matters a lot. You could have a messed up tile job and lippage and cuts are bad and all that stuff and all that's kind of aesthetics the prep matters a lot why are you talking bad about this guy you know like you don't know the circumstances and you know da 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 and it's oh it's not that bad and you know you were mr perfect and yeti 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 and I, I you know what it's it's actually kind of funny at first and now it's just getting old and i don't even entertain those comments anymore sometimes i do Sometimes if I feel like I'm in a drama type of mood, um, I might entertain the comments for a minute. If there's a back and forth playing out, eventually I'm just, you know, I don't have time for this and I'll just, I'll just delete the comment and then I'll block the person. And um, that's one of my favorite things on YouTube. That's my favorite thing. I'm so glad that YouTube has allowed me to block people. One of the pleasures about not being paid on YouTube, although I appreciate each and every one of my subscribers that has subscribed to me over the years, a lot of people that don't subscribe to me that go onto my channel because they see a specific video where I'm berating another tile guy because that's what I was called to do to find out if a job was salvageable and I'm gonna get back to that in a second. Well, you don't know what happened and I can't believe you're gonna talk bad about somebody else and blah, blah, blah. And then, I'm, you know, like I said, I, I'm, I might entertain that for a minute but eventually I'm gonna block them and I just I love the block feature. I love, love, love the block feature because those people more than likely aren't subscribed to me anyway, so it's no skin off my big nose to make that happen. The comments that I have a problem with are the people that just continue, well, cussing is number one. You're gonna get blocked if you cuss in the comments because I don't, I don't, I don't deal with that at all. But more than cussing, you're gonna get blocked if you don't if all you have to say is negative stuff about me and you have nothing to show, my thing is about proof. Even on my videos, all, I'm all about proof. There's other YouTubers out there that show no proof. They say, trust me, trust me, trust me. You may not have a problem next week. You may not have a problem next month or next year, but trust me, eventually you're gonna have a problem. Then back it up. If you're going to go out on a limb and say, yes, you will have a problem if you don't do it exactly by the book, if you don't do it exactly by the book, you're gonna have a problem. And it may not happen a year from now, or five years from now, or maybe 10 years from now, but you will have a problem. Show me the proof. That's all I want. Anytime I post videos and I talk about problems that people have, I dissect the shower and I show where the problem exists and I mitigate those problems. That's me. And all this, you know, followed by rules and TCNA and you must do it this way and if you don't do it that way there's gonna be a failure and the sky is falling. <laughs> there are a lot of ways to get to the end result. You can do everything that that book doesn't say to do and you can still get the same result. You can still end up with sometimes a better result than if you had followed the book. And that's the beauty of this creative process that we're in. Um, especially with tile work. There's a lot of different ways to get to that end result and not one way is perfect and not one way is right on. Oh, and more to the point, because you use expensive tools and because you use expensive products does not guarantee you an okay job. There are people who learn this stuff, this trade and other trades, carpentry and stuff like that on their own. They learn it on their own and they are sometimes better than the professionals, the so-called professionals. So that's my point. I think it would be unfair if I went out on a consultation like this, like I am today, and saw all these issues that this contractor struggled against. Trust me on that, he struggled to do this right and he couldn't make it happen. And then consult with the, the person who hired me to come out and have a look and keep it to myself and tell her 
what the issues are and how they can be rectified and just let it go. Why would I ever do that? The whole point of having my YouTube channel is not just to show my work, but it's also to show other people's work and how bad things can get. That's the whole point. That's why I do these vi videos. I think it is responsible. I think it, it's responsible for me to uh, to go over and enumerate all of the mistakes that can be made, so that you, the potential consumer, will have a clue onto what's going on. If I didn't show these these bad bathroom jobs, then they would perpetuate, and people would not know. How can you know if you don't know? You got to know what you don't know. Duh. So here I am once again on a bad shower job. And the shower job is not complete. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go over, as I always do, uh, the mistakes that were made. Because I am doing a consultation. Not always do I do the finished job. If you look at some of my videos where I show the bad bathroom job, yes, I show before, during, sometimes, and after. Bob, is any of this salvageable? What can I do? Am, am I stuck like Chuck? Am I stuck doing this all over again or what? That's, that's the main reason I do these. So here we are. Uh, the floor is kind of self-explanatory. This tile is, a, is um, a good medium grade, medium, I say medium to high grade, uh, large, large format tile that kind of replicates natural stone like a travertine type of look. It's 12 by 24. Those measurements are nominal. It's about 11 and 3 quarters by 23 and 3 quarters. Um, it's not a bad tile. It's pretty thick. Um, I've worked with it many times before and I do like it. Um, it is rectified, meaning that there's no bevel on this tile, that the edges are straight and flush, and every tile matches every other tile. But if you take two tile and, and put them together face to face, you're going to see I'm pushing my feet in there and this is popping out. And then when I push this in, then the bottom is popping out a little bit. And you could do that with almost every two tile from any box. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna push down on these to get them flat. And then you see the discrepancies over there. And I could do the opposite. I could push down on that and you'll see the discrepancy over there. So these tiles are not absolutely 100% perfect, but they're pretty close. When you're doing multiple tile, this is a 10 foot ceiling. So when you're doing multiple tile, that little 16th of an inch matters because you've got three tile, well in this case four tile, matching up against each other. So that becomes uh, more relevant having that discrepancy. Now that's not the problem that this guy ran into. The problem he ran into, because <laughs> he hasn't built a shower before. By the time he got to this point, he realized, look there's one tile missing. By the time he got to this point, he realized that he couldn't do the job. And he actually fired himself. I think it was a mutual decision between the homeowner and the contractor. That, um, that he was messing up. And a lot of these things that she asked him to rectify, he wasn't able to because it was after the fact. And that's the whole purpose of doing these videos. Don't get stuck in this after the fact. Right now we have a huge discrepancy between this mosaic, this glass mosaic, and these tile that surround it. And there's a reason for that. This is a little smaller than that is. Uh, and it gets worse over here. Um, I, I, I've already mentioned this on a couple other videos. This is huge. Look at that. That's, a, that's about a three-eighths of an inch of the discrepancy. As opposed to the bottom here, which is about a, an eighth of an inch. Um, mosaic, almost all mosaic, this tile is not as thick as this is. And because of that, there is a trick that you must do quarter inch backer board, whether it's Durock, Hardy backer, whatever it is, quarter inch backer board needs to take up this space. So if this is six inches, then you put your backer board on the wall as normal, and then you take a six inch piece of quarter inch backer board and you glue that to your backer board. Now that bumps it out. So now you do this first and you stick this flush. You're doing a small notch trowel and, and you're, you're screening out your thin set. You're not back bettering this and you push this in, you push it in um, with a float usually is the easiest way and you push it into the mortar all the way around that will be flush to this guarantee That's the little trick of that Problem that he ran into Is he stuck his tile straight to the wall? 
So if you can see here, there's absolutely <laughs> this tile. Oh, hold on a second. I got a piece. This is the same thickness, same tile. This is a bull nose from the same exact tile. How much thin set do you think he has on that wall? <laughs> there you go. That's what I'm telling you. You cannot stick your tile straight to the wall. It doesn't work that way. Um, the weird thing is that increasingly he ended up with more thin set. You can clearly see it there. So by the time he got to the ceiling, there's about a quarter inch of thin set. That's that's a, that's about right. <sighs> but he didn't start that way. You know, all the way down. He's got. It's, it, it's just all over the board. There's, there's no rhyme or reason to the way he screeded out or the way he troweled out his thin set. And then of course he didn't back butter any of the tile. So the good part about that in my experience of people who do that is some of this tile can be saved because there's not a lot of adhesion to the wall. The bad part is a lot of this cannot be saved. And this, look at that. I don't know if the camera shows it clearly. It's like, look at here. It's just dipped in, dipped in a lot of different places. This is popped out. This is dipped in. Um, big gap. And the gap exists because this is bowed out and these are pushed in, especially that one at the top is pushed in a lot. And these top are all pushed in and this one's cocked out and let's just look at that gap right there at the end. Look at that huge discrepancy. I don't know if you can see it. I have to come around the other side. Look at that huge discrepancy. So that's a huge problem. That's a big problem. Now getting back to the side here where he set his tile straight to the wall. Look at all the fence set that he left in here. Spacers were left in here too. Spacers were left in here, like literally into the thin set. The thin set was so sloppily done that these spacers are stuck inside of the tile of the, of the spacing. In fact, this isn't even thin set. This is mastic. So for whatever reason, he decided, is this mastic? Yeah, tile adhesive. Anytime it says tile adhesive, that means it's mastic. He thought it would be easier to set this with mastic, but of course it wasn't. And he went through the same process. It wouldn't have mattered with him whether it was mastic or thin set. He, he just did this so wrong on this wall. I keep on interrupting myself. Whoops, where are we at? So we're off right there. Whoops, we're off that gap. That's about half an inch. So the whole wall is off by half an inch. And there's no reason for that. I mean, by the eye, you really can't tell that half an inch, and there's not a huge reason for that to happen when, and then here's another thing I don't agree with, the tile is not even set outside of the curb area. The curb area is not even done to begin with, um, but by the time it gets done, there's going to be a discrepancy. So, let me grab a tile. So by the time the curb gets <laughs> done, what are you going to have? You're going to have the curb tile sticking out past the wall tile. It should be the different, different way. I would have used a bull nose at the end here instead of a Schluter strip. And that would have got you out at least, you know, past the curb. So when the curb does get done. And then, of course, he did this kind of backwards too. Well, he did the whole job backwards, if you notice. <laughs> so the floor tile was not set. The wall tile is literally sitting on top of the pan. The pan wasn't red guarded. <sighs> There's just so much going on here. Look at this. The tile, um, the wall tile is uh, set over the top of the curb, but the curb isn't tiled yet, so that makes no sense either. Yeah, I'm, I'm not going to go through explaining every everything because I, I tend to just ramble and ramble and ramble and I forget some of the stuff that I've already mentioned already. But look at, I mean, you can just kind of go through this stuff as a homeowner. You should know this stuff as a homeowner, right? backer board set on the top of the curb big discrepancy big discrepancy on that cut um, there's discrepancies on grout lines there there is no grout line here literally you got tile against tile that's a big no-no there has to be some type of spacing whoops yes we did a spacing but that's a quarter inch and it tapers down to an eighth of an inch here there's nothing here there's nothing <laughs> so 
Here there is a bowed cut. I don't know how I got a bowed cut on this tile. And then nothing again. And then a bowed cut. So, um, wow, he cut the hole right. I think that's the only thing in here that was done right. That's about it. Uh, God, I just keep on finding more stuff to Schluter strip that can clearly be seen and that won't be covered with the grout unless you taper off the grout. I don't know. Let me show. All right. I don't know if you can see that. There we go. I think that's a better look. So there's there a pretty pretty big gap going on there. I don't know how that could be overcome to make it right. It's flush here. It's way too flush over here, like they're lined up back to back. It's just a mess. I could I could go on and on. I think I think sometimes in my videos I don't even have to say much. It just kind of all this garbage speaks for itself. You know, they're offset. They're not even flush to each other. Big lippage going on here at the top. Sometimes I act like that. Uh, another thing, Schluter, on most of their products have corners, so the corner pieces will actually slide, that corner piece will slide into the bottom, and this one's to give you a nice flush thing going on, and at the very least, even if they didn't come with the corner pieces, you take these pieces and you do a little 45 cut and butt them up against each other, so he didn't do that either. Um, this is a prefab niche. Again, I'm not a big believer in prefab niches, that's just me. Look at that. God, holy moly. Sorry. Um, I'm not a big believer in prefab niches. But, if I'm going to do a prefab niche, I'm going to put it in right side up. I don't know if you can see here. There's a slope, there's a natural slope that they make these niches with, so the water runs off. That natural slope is on the top, and it's not on the bottom. So the niche was actually put in upside down. Uh, what else, what else, what else? Uh, the pan isn't horrible, but again, the tile, the floor tile needs to go first. There was, oh, by the way, there's no waterproofing. Let me talk about that for a second. This is back of board inside of here, so you can clearly see this is Durock. Um, Waterproofing, I didn't do for probably the first 12, maybe 13 years I've been in this business. So I've done a lot of showers without waterproofing. And, and I've taken out many more showers that had no waterproofing, that had builder's grade tile, that had no sealing done, that had, you know, unsanded grout and a lot of different issues that lasted and lasted 25, 30, 35, 40 years without waterproofing. So I'm going back in with a larger format tile with a hardier grout with sealing of the grout, with admix to the grout, with a lot of things going on on a wall that makes it irrelevant whether or not you waterproof your walls. There's this huge, huge push nowadays with some other tilers on YouTube who push Curdy, Schluter, and all these other crap products that are plastic and foam and all that stuff. And they just believe. So I use RedGuard, topical liquid membrane. And it doesn't matter if Aqua Defense, RedGuard, whatever, you paint it on a couple of coats and you put your tile on. I don't think it does any good. It's, it's a, an insurance policy. I do it because I'm gonna do it anyway on the floor. I do it because I wanna do it over the curb. Those things matter, but I don't think the walls matter that much. Um, I've yet to come on to a shower bathtub, yes but not a shower wall that's falling apart because it wasn't waterproof. It's specifically because it wasn't waterproof. So the whole idea of waterproofing your walls and using all these expensive products is way, way overkill. So getting back to here that he didn't waterproof his walls, okay, I can live with that. Um, it's not gonna affect the shower one way or the other. It's not gonna, um, by not waterproofing, it's not gonna degrade the life of the shower, and put it like that. The floor, yes, I'm pretty adamant about waterproofing the floor on the curb, but all that should have been done prior to the tile being on here because now you have no way to waterproof this area. So I'm gonna recommend that before she starts tiling that she do some type of caulking or something like that to at least stop water from ever wicking up into that area should any of this stuff fail. 
But anyway, going on to what I was going to get at, it, it's not badly formed. There are some discrepancies that can be worked out. There are some high spots that can be scraped off, some low spots that some thin set could be put on. So it's not horrible, it's not terrible. Uh, the tile will still be able to be, by the time the thin set is spread out, the tile will still be um, a little bit above the drain cover, which is great. Love that. So no issues there. You know, I, do, I did another video recently where I chastised a guy for not doing a circle cut around the drain, um, around, sorry, around the toilet drain, um, and I had a lot of comments, so oh, it's not necessary, the toilet's going to sit on there anyway, and yada, yada, yada. You know what? That's a professional thing. That's just me. It's a professional thing. Why would you cut, why would you cut something like this in a square when you can just as easily take a little bit more time and get it kind of almost flush up against the toilet flange? That's just me. Um, again, you can do it any way you want. I'm just letting you know, for me, that looks sloppy. And yes, the, to the toilet will cover it eventually, but yeah, that's just me. Speaking of sloppy, I, did, I noticed this earlier, I was gonna say something, a chip tile, so this tile has to come out anyway. Why would you set a chip tile knowing it's chipped inside of here? No grout line whatsoever. <laughs> Yet there's a big one there. No grout line. No grout line. Yeah. Uh, don't get caught in this. Don't, when you hire a contractor, at the very least, and I'm okay if people do this with me, this would take me to build this shower and do this for, would take me eh, about seven days, eight days tops. Every day when I leave, take a picture of the process. When I do the pan and pour the pan, take a picture at the end of the day. Take a picture after I prepped everything. Take a picture every day. Oh, see, I don't know how this guy did the prep. If he did the tile this crappy, I don't know how the prep was done. So if there was a leak or there was an issue later on with the drain or anything's going on, at least you have an inside, you, you know what things, how they were done, so that now you can focus in on what the possible problem was instead of, instead of guessing. By day two, three, four, whatever, when I'm doing these videos, I'm showing you all the mistakes. And if you're seeing these mistakes happen to your job, then stop the job. Why get into this, this issue where you spent all this money that has to be wasted? It makes no sense. I know I've said that on many of my videos before. You can go through my channel. I have quite a few videos of these type of jobs that were done half-assed, but it kills me that all this material and time and labor has to be wasted when there's no there's no reason for it. Just do your due diligence on hiring somebody and then don't be on top of them, don't micromanage, but make sure that you know some of this stuff, that you know how things are supposed to look so that when you get to a point where, no, 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 day two, no, 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 this isn't right. Have the guy rectify it, let him fire himself, let, you know, just do something proactive to make it not happen to you. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, then subscribe. Hit that button and subscribe. I make nothing off of YouTube, so please be a Patreon member. I'm gonna post a link down below to my Patreon account, and you can donate a dollar, five dollars, ten dollars, twenty dollars a month. Just pledge that that on a monthly basis. That will help me produce more videos and, and content so that you can watch and learn from my channel. And donate at least $50 if you're gonna call. If you're gonna call for advice, donate to my PayPal, please. Donate first and then feel free to call me or email me uh, for advice. Otherwise, business calls only, please.